We call this the west wing, so the, it's the right hand side of the building as you're looking at it from the water, was the old mine manager's house. So this is 1840, 1860, this house here. And then when Sir George Grey bought the island, he bought the whole island, the mining had wound down and closed. Um, he actually used second-hand bricks. He, he pulled down the old chimneys from the smelting house, from the mining uh, days, and uh, built what we know as Mansion House from the, from the old chimneys from the smelting house. There are 47 islands in Auckland's Hauraki Gulf. Some are accessible by ferry from Auckland, while many more can only be reached by private boat. One of the most curious is sprawling Kawo Island, 50 kilometres to the north of Auckland city. It's dotted with houses and holiday cottages, half hidden in regenerating native forest. Kawo Island used to have an abundance of shags, and the word Kawo means shag in Māori. The island was originally populated by Māori, who valued the surrounding shark fishing grounds. The island was mined for copper during the 1840s and 50s. Up to 300 miners lived on the island, many of them from Cornwall in England. In 1862, Kawo was purchased by the Governor of New Zealand, Sir George Grey. He was the most powerful and controversial politician of the 19th century. Grey used Kawo as a place to escape the pressures of politics and colonial administration. Grey indulged his interests at Kawo Island, which included collecting exotic plants and animals from around the world. He thought that could provide the foundations of future crops and industries in New Zealand. The deer of Britain may be seen hurrying past. The kangaroos of Australia, spanning across the path, pull up erect to view the stranger. Tree kangaroos from New Guinea are seen hopping up and down puriri trees. The visitors kept ever on the alert by the whir of Californian quail or Chinese pheasants, and the wallaby and kangaroo in numbers keep zigzagging across his path. The Cape Barren Goose might also exhibit to him the unusual sight of a bird carrying her young under her wings. Other species Grey imported included possums, peacocks, emus, kookaburras, monkeys and zebras. The zebras pulled Grey's carriage on his regular tours of his island estate. The monkeys did not survive because apparently they made too much noise around Grey's homestead, so he shot them. Possums, wallabies and peacocks are still found on the island and a garden of unusual trees surrounds Grey's mansion house. Imported birds such as kookaburras and rosellas are common in Kawo's forests, where they coexist with native birds such as the kiwi and the weka. Grey's mansion house sits on the edge of a sheltered bay surrounded by pine trees that have spread across much of the southern part of the island, another of Grey's legacies. The house itself has been restored and contains Victorian furnishings in keeping with Grey's occupancy. Governor Grey lived here between 1862 and 1888 with his niece and her family. During this period, and during his first governorship from 1845 to 1853, Grey sought to advance the colony by reconciling Māori and European. He used an iron fist to subdue aggrieved Māori tribes whose opposition threatened the spread of European settlement. However, he also befriended many Māori chiefs and used his extensive contacts to write a study in several volumes of Māori culture and traditions. Today, Kawo Island is a favourite anchorage for Auckland boaties. You can wander among the exotic palms in Grey's garden and inspect the house where he entertained. This continues the tradition of hospitality begun by Grey, who made a large number of visitors welcome. Some were taken by coach or given fine horses to inspect Kawo. It was worth the voyage to New Zealand to have a single day with Sir George on Kawo. Gray's mansion was restored in 1977 and his extensive library of 15,000 books is now kept at the Auckland Public Library. Sir George Gray's controversial personality and policies are still debated today.